Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Anna the Archer Let's Play. We are doing a bow only playthrough on Calamity Mod on Revengeance Mode. Today we're going to start off by exploring the underground jungle temple. We've got our keys and our piggy bank, and I think we are good to go. I also wanted to grab a danger sense potion, and that will help quite a bit. We'll go ahead and use our jungle teleport potion to go to the entrance of the jungle. Ooh, we got a Plantera bulb right here. Might as well kill Plantera. I just can't pass up a bulb when I see one. So it looks like our jungle temple is pretty far down and pretty much just straight down. Okay, it looks like we've seen the jungle on the mini-map here. Now we just need to find the entrance. Looks like we found the entrance, and we've got a treasure chest right on the outside. That's kind of cool. So we just put on a Danger Sense potion, and we'll loot up the rest of this. And here we go. We'll just break all these traps just to make it safe. Might as well. We need to grab our key, which we have right here in our piggy bank. So open that up. And we got another treasure chest right here. The main thing we're trying to get are these cores, these lizard power cells. It'll allow us to fight the boss multiple times and hopefully get the picks off. Looks like we're going to need to summon our fairy merchant and sell some of this. So we can sell archery, gravitation, we don't need that. Well, I think we may have made it to the final room here. Perfect. So now we just need to prepare our arena, get rid of all these traps, and start fighting the golem. This is actually quite fortunate. This is one of the bigger room spawns I've seen. I think all the traps are done. So let's put a few torches throughout this. capped off the arena up at the top so we don't get stuck or anything. And now we're just going to put a platform right across the middle. I think we are prepared. Let's get this going. So usually Golem is pretty easy, but I don't really remember if anything has been changed in Revengeance mode. I usually just kind of run back and forth dodging his fireballs. And it's pretty hard for him to hit you if you keep moving. I might try switching over to Holy. Since he stays put, I find that bosses that move too quickly don't really get too much extra damage from using the Holy arrows, but this guy is pretty much getting hit by most of these.
he seems to be unchanged so far. I haven't noticed any difference other than he seems to have a lot more health. But other than that, it's about the same as expert mode. Okay, well, I'm switching back to my lunar bow here because it's a lot more accurate. Okay, well this is this is actually starting to be a little bit different. But still I wouldn't say it's too hard to dodge or anything. I'm gonna pop a heal. Actually, he is starting to go a little bit crazy on me. We've got the head down. Now we just need to finish off the body. This should be much easier. And we have a heal in 30 seconds. Finish him off with some adrenaline. And we got the Pixar. That's what I was wanting. Very excited. Don't really want to fight him too many more times. We can immediately replace our pickaxe axe with a Pixar. And let's see what we got out of the bag. The Stinger, Golem Mask, Shiny Stone. Let's see if... Oh, interesting. That Shiny Stone attaches to things but that's with weapons out so I won't be building those um, then we got beetle husks and sunlight nice the main thing is getting that pick saw and just for kicks let's open up and see oh we got the seedler it's one of my favorite swords in the game um, that's from the plantera we killed earlier and I think we can break this now that we have pick saw yeah so we could take the lizard altar up to our base and fight him again up there. Although we don't need to fight him just yet because we can go get a new tier of armor. So we can clear up our inventory and then head on over to the abyss. I almost forgot, we did get a lore piece that gives you an increase to your defense while standing still, which seems to be an increase of 10. I don't stand still during anything that's of importance. So I think I'm just gonna put that in our lore chest, but it's good to know about. So we can equip some of our abyss suit stuff. Use these. So this right here reduces damage caused by the pressure of the abyss, removes the bleed effect caused by the abyss, grants the ability to swim and greatly extends underwater breathing, provides a moderate amount of light in the abyss, greatly reduces breath loss in the abyss. So we'll put that on over our stress pills and we'll put the boots on over our angel treads and this last thing we can do it over our counter scarf and we'll head on in i think on the map it's this red icon right there yep and it's chaotic or i think Chaotic Ore. So let's grab a bunch of this stuff. I think some of these fish also drop the ore. Ooh, this is a big chunk of it. And it looks like we got another chunk right here. doesn't even look like we're running out of breath on the abyss anymore. Maybe we're protected enough now from all of our new gear. Okay, we got a squid. Okay, a squid's not bad. Oh no. It's the worm. I do not like that. That is scary. <laughs> oh my goodness. I guess it's calm. 
And it's not attacking me? I just want to pick up the aura that I got here. And what I do not want to do is disturb that guy. I have a feeling he will insta-kill me. Let's grab all this ore. And we should have enough. I kind of want to just go down deeper and see what's up. Grab some of that planty mush. That's always good. Oh my goodness. I think we've reached the bottom. <laughs> Oh wow, it goes down deeper. <laughs> what is that treasure chest right there? That's crazy, I didn't know there were treasure chests at the very bottom. We got 588 chaotic ore. That's great. Plus some more planty mush. So I'm thinking we may as well go back in there. And this time, instead of trying to get ore and all that, we should just try to go straight to the bottom and avoid as many enemies as we can. And hopefully we'll be able to see what that treasure chest was. It looked like a shrine or something. Uh-oh, eel. That's not good. I think he's after me. Hopefully not find a reaver shark like we did last time. Oh boy, <laughs> that's right there. You can see I've got auto pause on cheese in it, but it did 288 damage to me. Oh my goodness. What is this? A ritualistic artifact thought to have brought upon the end many millennia ago, sealed away in the abyss far from those who would seek to misuse it. It activates the boss rush mode. Using it again will deactivate boss rush mode. That is so exciting. We're definitely going to have to use that when we finish our playthrough and see how we do with bows only in the boss rush. This is creepy. Well, we've reached the very bottom and I'm gonna just teleport out. I'm scared. Let's head back to our base and sort through our stuff. Now that we have all that ore, we can refine it and turn it into these chaotic bars. So let's make as many of those as we can. Looks like we made plenty. Ooh, we can make a great bow out of this chaotic ore. To make the armor, we need cores of chaos and hellstone. So we can make cores of chaos pretty easily. Those are just essence of chaos and ectoplasm. So let's make a few of those, put those away. And now we need to grab some Hellstone out of our pre-hard mode treasure chest. And now we can craft. So let's do the armor, of course the legs, and we just need to find the ranger damage right here. So let's compare. Right now we have 95 defense and our cosmic bolter is 145 range damage. Once when we equip our ataxia armor, we've gained three defense and our bow has actually lost damage. I was expecting this to be a much bigger upgrade. It says it increases range damage, range crit, ammo, immunity to lava, immunity to fire damage, set bonus, more range damage, inferno effect when below 50% life. You have a 50% chance to fire a homing chaos flare when using ranged weapons. You have a 20% chance to emit a blazing explosion when you are hit. I think that little fire effect right there is what is adding the extra damage, not necessarily the base damage increasing that much. Well, we'll, we'll test it out. It will probably be a bit better. Whoa, on my first roll, I got Unreal for this Great Bow of Turmoil. We're hitting over 3,000 damage per second. That's great. Now let's give it a shot with this bow right here, the Rail Bow. And it's barely hitting, well, actually, it's hitting about 2,500. That means we could put away this bow and 
switch all the way to the Great Bow of Turmoil now. And we'll go ahead and put away the Unreal Ballista as well, since we haven't really been using that. We can put our Lizard summoning right here and start summoning the Golem. And let's test this bow out and see how it does on an actual boss. So we're doing like a thousand DPS. And let's switch to our laser bow. I always forget the cosmic, what is this called? Cosmic Bolter. So Cosmic Bolter seems like it's doing actually less DPS. So I think this is our definitive bow for the moment. Okay, we got Adrenaline on. Use that up. Got the big head. Now we just need to destroy the body. Seems the body gets much more aggressive. It might be because we're outside of the jungle. And we're almost done. There we go. And we got the Eye of Golo. So I'm going to go ahead and kill him once or twice more. I'm looking for a Sunstone. By the time we've killed him a few more times, we should also have plenty of gold to do some boss bags from the merchant. So we'll get that item pretty quickly here. And we got another Pixaw, but no Sunstone. Golem is going to cost three platinum, so let's buy a couple of these and see what we can get. Still none. Oh, bummer. Well, we've used up like 10 platinum. And still no items, so I think we're just going to have to farm them a little bit more. That was a weirdly close one, but we got another treasure bag, and still nothing. We've used up our last two cells, and let's see what we got. Still not getting it. I may, I may be thinking of the wrong thing. Let me see if I can verify that he actually drops this. So we're trying to craft the Daedalus emblem, which means we need the Celestial Stone, which is crafted from the Sunstone and the Moonstone. We've got the Moonstone, and yep, it says Sunstone comes from Golem. So we're just not getting lucky here. We've got some more platinum from farming him. So let's just buy three more bags and hope for the best. Still nothing. This is ridiculous. Sometimes though, the game just really doesn't want you to get a certain item. I'm gonna go farm some gold and, oh, what is the witch doctor doing on the house? <laughs> get down, that's not safe. You don't have wings like me. But yeah, I'll go farm some gold and then we'll buy a bunch more treasure bags because we're out of the little cells to summon him. Looks like we got the sunstone finally after probably 15 boss bags. So let's go ahead and Sell all the rest of this stuff we don't need. So what we're going to do with the Sunstone is we're going to combine it with the Moonstone we got from the Solar Eclipse. Which we should be able to do over here. Make the Celestial Stone. And then the Celestial Stone will combine with a Core of Calamity and the Ranger Emblem. Which we've got one right here. And that will create the Daedalus accessory. So let's make some cores of Calamity. We need to create cores of Sunlight, some of those, and then we need cores of Elium. And now we can create cores of Calamity, create two of those, and we can do Daedalus. It increases range damage by 10%, 5% to range crit, and 20% reduced ammo usage. It also increases life regen, minion, knockback, defense, and pickup speed. So let's see 
I'm going to unequip that item. And let's put it on and see how much defense we get. So it gives us five defense. And it also increases life regen. It's kind of good. It turns into the elemental quiver. And that happens once when we have the next tier of the dungeon. Okay, we've got warding. And I think that's probably good for now. We may switch this off for our warding stress pills because those boost our damage by 8%, defense by eight, max movement speed. But this increases our damage by more and it does regeneration. So I think that's, it's almost a direct upgrade. We lose a little bit of defense, but we gain increase life regen, minion knockback, defense and pick speed. So if I remember correctly, the jungle should actually have some new mobs in it. Let's head on over there and check it out. I thought they were under the ground, but they're actually on the surface. And they're these kind of corrupted looking, plagued jungle enemies. There we go. And what they're dropping plague cell canisters. This is pretty cool. The plague cell canisters create a lot of sci-fi looking household items like bookcase like it looks like all this cool laboratory stuff so what we're looking to craft is this abomination which will summon essentially the upgraded version of queen bee so we need 10 of them to summon one so let's go ahead and collect maybe 30. Okay, well, we've got about 31 now, so I think we're good to head back. We're just gonna craft three of these, and we can put the rest of our plague cell canisters right there. Next episode, we will be ready to fight the new version of the Queen Bee, and hopefully defeat her. This episode has been a really good one. We've defeated Golem. We've upgraded so much stuff this episode. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one, and I'll see you next time.